Good morning, everyone. Here we go. Brand new edition of Sports Medicine Weekly here on 670 The Score. My name is Steve Cashel. So happy to be joined this week by Dr. Charles Bush Joseph. If he's filling in for Dr. Brian Cole and Dr. Chuck, as I call him, is a 16 years as the head team physician for the Chicago White Sox. He is a sports medicine specialist, orthopedic surgeon from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Our producer this week is Adam Staczynski. And Tracy Tarl is our coordinating producer, as usual. Dr. Chuck, how are you? I'm fine, Steve. Uh, happy to get up with you this morning. Oh, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, since you were the White Sox head team physician for so many years, uh, I want to start with a topic that, boy, I'm seeing a lot of, and that is it seems like there's so many pitchers that are going on the early disabled list. Um, but let's talk about dead arm, okay? Explain what dead arm is. And it always seems like I remember John Lester went through it, whether it was two years ago. So many of these pitchers, um, and not to single out Lester, because I don't know if it's half the guys or starting pitchers, relief pitchers, but give me your experiences working in Major League Baseball with what dead arm is and how often you saw it. You know, Steve, dead arm was really common. And, you know, and typically it's actually more common in the mid-career or even the older career uh, pitcher. And, and I guess I want to reinforce the dead arm is generally not anything serious, and it's usually not structural. Uh, the analogy I think we talked about earlier with Tracy, it's more that every runner gets when you're training for a marathon or a 10K. You sort of get that initial burst where every day is better than the day before. I'm feeling stronger, got better velocity, better control. And then all of a sudden, early in camp or sometimes mid-camp, I just hit the wall. You know, and generally, Steve, it's a muscle fatigue issue. Throwing a baseball is not a natural phenomenon. It puts a lot of stress on your rotator cuff muscles. And even though our athletes take plenty of time off, start to ramp up, so most of them have been throwing and playing catch for anywhere from three to five to six weeks before the start of camp, throwing hard and throwing hard is more difficult than just playing catch. And so usually the guys will hit that dead arm frame. They get a little bit sore. They lose their velocity. And that's when the medical staff intervenes. We back them down give them a three to five days off or at least throwing only in a light fashion before that strength starts to recover. Is it ice then or is it just really rest? Or is there any other therapeutic no, things you guys do? It's really more of a combination of all of the above. It is rust and it is ice and it is heat. But when we say rest, we still say active rest. Because when we say throwing or pitching a baseball is a maximum effort event, we want them still throwing, and we ha- we'll take down their throwing from 100%, maybe down to 75 or even 50%, because so they can throw comfortable to keep the motion. Rarely, occasionally, we have to shut them down completely, but that's not usual. Usually, we just get them back off the mound, just have them playing catch. Uh, usually, their symptoms will improve as long as we can keep them actively exercising, active blood flow into the muscles and tendons. Most of them recover. Is it bad then when they feel the pain in the elbow? Because you mentioned the shoulder. Yeah, you know, shoulder, some shoulder soreness uh, uh, is normal. Elbow pain is not, and and that's more of a stop sign. Uh, The shoulder discomfort, as we would say, shoulder tightness, we would say, is a common event and usually indicative of that, quote, dead arm syndrome. Pain over the medial aspect of the elbow and pain on release, different story, we get more concerned about being structural, and, there's, and the stop sign comes up on that event. Now, in your everyday practice, what are you seeing from the high school pitchers and even the Little League pitchers? Um, you know, they're starting to throw now as we get into March and April. It's still cold outside, obviously, and they're ramping up their baseball seasons now, at least starting off. Well, you know, uh, this is where I'm going to say that our major league athletes had a tremendous advantage over our local high school and little leaguers. Reason being because it is very cold out. There's uh, we have weather days where they can't participate or play at all, and we're trying to jam an entire spring season into probably which is no better than 50 percent time. But if, if the parents, coaches, and trainers go back to our basic principle: proper warm up, proper warm up, proper warm up then we're going to minimize these events. What's the best warm-up? You know, if you look at how our athletes and certainly how are the White Sox pitchers in Glendale, they're playing catch. They're going to start with about a 45-degree, 45-throw warm-up where they're playing short toss and then gradually stretch that out to a medium toss, long toss, long toss on a hump, as we say, and then hard flat ground throwing. And that may take 15, 20 minutes. And, and, and that's where we have to get our, our, our high school athletes, our little leaguers, run out on the diamond, throw three pitches, and get up on the mound. On a professional basis, a warm-up should be a 25- to 30-minute event. Wow, really interesting stuff. 